In this quarter's PES Win Magazine, there's a lot of great articles that you need to read. And the way to do that is go to PESWin.com and download your free edition. And we want to talk about an article in the magazine this quarter, Joel, which is hybrid brakes, yaw brakes, and why you would use them, why they're just a little bit different than what we typically see on like a GE machine. Uh, Siemens Gamesa uses these quite a bit, which are sort of a passive and an active, so that a brake. So there's a hydraulic cylinders and the, there's some active pads that close, but there's also some static pads and they're using slip rings instead of a, a bearing surface to rotate the yaw. So if, if that makes sense, to do an active system, uh, you can really put stress on your on your ball bearings and probably flatten them over time if you keep squeezing enough. With this system, it's a little more control, a little more precise. So you're, I, th I think the, the argument they're making is that it uh, s simplifies the system. So there's some complexities to it, but overall it costs less. And that's what we should be doing in engineering, right? Trying to figure out ways that maybe this costs a bit more for a component, but less overall. Is it a direct retrofit? Like, is this a, hey, we've, we've had we've had a component fail, so we want to put a new system in? Or is it like, hey, let's swap it out now as a CapEx cost? Or is it like during repower? When are they putting this on? It's from Delner Wind Solutions. Uh, and they're doing, doing it as part of OEM work, right? It, it does take a little bit of finite element analysis because of the way it loads up the, the yaw system. So you want to make sure that it doesn't overload it if you're going to use it. But... It's one of those things in wind, like uh, you would try to choose a simpler system on a smaller turbine. As you get larger and larger, your approach probably changes. And this is what Delano is pointing out. I've noticed that actually, if you're, if you've frequented any wind conferences, technology shows, exhibitions, you will know where Delner is because everything on their booth is lime green. Um, I love that. I think it's a great approach. Uh, which everybody knows it's, it's like seeing the Deme, the Deme ships or the SVAG ships in a port. You're like, you know what that one is right away. Uh, but Delner, but that's what Delner does, right? They, they are, they have parts that are direct replacements. Great. This is the part we've made it a little bit better, but it's a direct replacement, but they also are re-engineering things, making them better, uh, for the long haul, uh, from a operations standpoint. Cause I've seen some of their pitch they have different kind of pitch systems and stuff as well that they are, are retrofits for, for uh, specific machines that have trouble with them. Um, but yeah, uh, this one to me, I'm not an expert on yaw brakes. Of course, that's not my thing. Uh, but I do know that whenever you have to deal with that yaw system, whether it be the gearing, the brakes, or the, you know, like the, the pucks and the GE go bad all the time, like, it's an undertaking. Uh, down to the point where people have developed up tower machining processes to fix uh, issues with the yaw system and whatnot. So um, if they're, if, if someone is putting this much engineering effort into fixing a problem, it's definitely a problem. Yeah. You can think about the problem though. You have so much weight up in the nacelle and you're trying to pivot all the time and the wind is trying to move the nacelle, whether you want it to or not, the yaw system kind of takes all the abuse. So designing a system to last is really the key here without breaking things. I mean, how many turbines have we seen where the yaw gear teeth have been damaged or broken off because the brake system is not really de-stressing those teeth. It matters a lot. So as we get more and more efficient with wind turbines, we're going to be thinking about all the different components that go into a wind turbine and making them more efficient, making them last longer, making them cost less. So if you haven't downloaded the latest PES Wind magazine, do it. You can read this article from Downer. Just visit PESWind.com. As wind energy professionals, staying informed is crucial and let's face it, difficult. That's why the Uptime Podcast recommends PES Wind Magazine. PES Wind offers a diverse range of in-depth articles and expert insights that dive into the most pressing issues facing our energy future. Whether you're an industry veteran or new to wind, PES Wind has the high quality content you need. Don't miss out. Visit PESWind.com today.